Canonical is trying really hard to make Snap a core part of Ubuntu, and of course, a core part of the Linux ecosystem. However, when it comes to the Snap Store, they are putting in basically zero effort when it comes to curation. Of course, there are really great offerings on the store, from the likes of KDE, JetBrains, Spotify, VS Code, and a ton of other applications. But time and time again, we keep seeing the exact same malware show up on the store. Canonical has once again let a bunch of fake crypto wallets onto the store. And this is not just some random wallet that nobody has heard of. It is a fake version of a popular crypto wallet. There was an incident back in September of 2023. Temporary suspension of automatic snap registration following security incident. And then again in February of 2024. Can anyone tell if the Exodus wallet in Ubuntu software store is a scam? My wallet is empty after recovering. I don't remember which incident it was, but there was a user who lost $500,000 because of this. And now, once again, it is happening in March 2024. Guess who's back? Exodus scam Bitcoin wallet snap. This is a blog post from Alan Pope, otherwise known as Popey. I am recording this basically the day after it happened. I saw this and... I don't know what Canonical is doing, and more people need to hear about this. As you can tell by the title, this blog post initially focused on one particular fake wallet, that being a fake version of the Exodus wallet published by Digisafe 000000. Turns out, um, that publisher didn't just make one fake wallet, they made a bunch of fake wallets, Tronlink, Exodus Wallet, Electrum, Uniswap, Ledger Wallet, Metamask. If you know anything about the crypto space, you have heard of these applications. All of these wallets were published around the exact same time from a publisher that had zero existing published snaps. That by itself should throw up a giant red flag. Also, all of these wallets are made by completely different companies, and whilst this is a third-party publisher, it is really weird for one person to be publishing all of these different applications. Again, that should throw up a giant red flag. And I'm not talking about the user. The user is going to see a snap on the snap store, and it doesn't really matter who it's published by, because they're going to assume, oh, it's on the Snap Store. The Snap Store is run by Canonical, so clearly Canonical has made this application go through human review and determined the application is safe. I don't blame the user whatsoever here. The blame lies entirely on Canonical. How they don't have systems in place that flag this when it happens is absolutely beyond me. And do you know how I know they don't have systems in place? Because the following day, the exact same snaps were published from a different publisher. If you couldn't tell, I am really, really annoyed here because every time this happens, Canonical comes out and says, oh, we're working on the problem. We're gonna upgrade our security practices to make sure this doesn't happen. And then it happens again, and it happens again, and it happens again, and it happens again, and they change absolutely nothing, and it just keeps on happening. Now, Popey is an ex-Canonical employee, so he has some contacts that still work there. He reached out to them, and all of these apps have now been pulled. But how in the world do you get all of these pulled down, and then the next day, all of these come back, and then they have to be pulled again? Like, how do you not notice that something is happening? Well, there is a very good reason why they didn't notice. There is no human review in the Snap Store. There is human review in Apple, FlatHub, PyPy doesn't, this was just a presumption, but both FlatHub and the Apple App Store have human review. How do you run an app store without human review? Remember, FlatHub is run by volunteers. They can do human review. You can afford to do this. If this is actually the case, Canonical needs to hire people immediately, not go through like a three-month application process and then reject you after three months. No, you need to hire people yesterday. You should not be running the Snap Store without human reviewers. 
it's all well and good to have people moderate it after the fact. Those people are doing a great job, but nothing should be published on the Snap Store unless it is from a known publisher without human review. Of course, if they're established like KDE, JetBrains, Spotify, VS Code, you can assume that what these publishers are putting up is probably going to be safe. But how do you let Code Shield 0x0000 publish a bunch of crypto wallets? Again, this user had no published snaps on their account. Also, even though 20 snaps is pretty bad, there are some extras that weren't included in the blog post. We have things like the Mycelium wallet, we have Trust wallet, and Sam wallet, all posted by accounts that didn't have any published snaps. Now, here's what it looked like on the Snap Store page. A real minimum effort on the store listing page here, but I'm sure it could fool someone. They usually do. So the license is unset. It should be set to something like proprietary. It has a reasonable enough description here. Like, you know, you could have some screenshots or whatever, but like this is enough to convince someone. It just has the name Exodus Wallet and it's on the Snap Store. Somebody is going to be convinced by this. I said in previous videos that you should be doing a little bit more digging, but if it's on the Snap Store, it's reasonable to assume that, you know, this is being endorsed by Canonical. It's gone through human review, but as I said before, it hasn't. And honestly, I don't think most people know that. You know, if I'm being completely truthful here, the AUR and the Snap Store have about as much moderation. They have after-the-fact moderators who will delete things if they are malware, but there's no human review. Anybody can upload something and they can just upload from a bunch of different accounts if they get banned on the first one. For quite a while now, I have been very critical of the way the Snap Store uses its verified badge. For example, here is the Steam Snap. It is from Canonical Verified Account. Now a regular person is going to see a verified badge and assume, oh, this is an official distribution of the application. This is the way that Twitter used to do it because back then you couldn't buy verified badges. This is the way that Flathub works. And this is the way that verified is supposed to be used. But I have found something even dumber than the way they use the verified badge. Now, because it was in the store, this app showed up in searches in the desktop graphical storefront, Ubuntu software or app center, making it super easy to install. And do you know what this application said? Well, it said it's not malware. It said it's safe. This is insanely misleading. When they say it is safe, this means specifically it is sandboxed. Not that it's safe to run. This should not be saying safe whatsoever. This is a social engineering attack. It doesn't matter that it's sandboxed. If anybody working on the GNOME Software Center sees this video, please change this to anything else. Change it to something like sandbox and maybe include like a bit of hover text that explains what a sandbox is. But safe is not the word that should be there. Now Popey didn't just stop at O. Oh, this is clearly a fake crypto wallet. He went and downloaded it and basically tore it apart and ran it inside of a virtual machine. This as an opening screen looks fairly reasonable. But if you're paying attention, you very quickly realize it is not what you expected. If you try and create a new wallet, it waits a while, then gives a spurious error. That code path likely does nothing. What it really wants you to do is add an existing wallet. You give it a wallet name, that doesn't really matter. The important information they want is your secret passphrase. And like a password for an account on a website, if somebody gets your passphrase, they now own the wallet. As with all of these scam applications, all it does is ask for a Bitcoin recovery phrase, and with that, they'll likely steal all the coins and send off to the scammer's wallet. Obviously, I didn't test this with a real wallet phrase. When given a false passphrase slash recovery key, it calls some remote API, then shows some dubious error having already taken your recovery key and sent it to the scammer. Guys, this is totally a legit error. The server is currently unable to handle the request due to temporary overload or maintenance of the server. Now, a real error message would be aware of whether there is overload or maintenance, but just ignore that part. Now, after he downloaded it, he also went and unpacked the snap. And the snap itself isn't really that exciting. If you want to learn how to make a snap, this is basically 
a skeleton snap that explains everything you need to know. There's really nothing exciting with how it was actually built. Now, of course, it does request network access, but you're not surprised about that. Now, the interesting thing is this right here, WebKit 2 GTK. So, unlike the prior scammy application that was written using Flutter by a developer who actually knows how to make things, the developers of this one appear to have made a web page in WebKit GTK. So, if you don't have network access, <laughs> It just shows you a could not connect network is unreachable error. The application doesn't load because there isn't an application, it's just a website. There is obviously one very big advantage here. It makes it very, very easy to go and make a bunch of other scam applications because all of these ones are just websites as well. You don't need to build another application with different UI elements. Nope, it's just a website. Also, it makes it very easy to analyze how everything works. So, as you're writing your passphrase, there is a dictionary in the code base. This dictionary is used to basically check if that word is a valid passphrase word. If it's a valid word, you're allowed to write it. And then once you have enough words written down in your passphrase, then you can go and click the continue button, which sends a post request to the collect endpoint. If you do that, whatever passphrase you have written has now been stolen. Also, just for good measure, uh, it has telemetry as well. It also periodically pings the slash ping endpoint on the server with a simple payload of name exodus, presumably for network connectivity checking, telemetry, or seeing which of the scam wallet applications are in use. That would be telemetry, Popey. Those are the same thing. Also, all of this is done over HTTP because of course it is. No security needed here, so... You know, not only are you going to lose it to some hacker, you also might just lose it to a man in the middle attack. But at that point, it really doesn't matter who gets it. In his post on the prior situation, Popey outlined a bunch of things that Canonical should be doing urgently. Things that, I might add, they didn't do after that last thing. Firstly, mandate and verify that all published applications using financial and or cryptocurrency branding are officially published directly by the upstream developers. Change the store so all initial Snapcraft store name registrations are gated behind human review. So you can't go and do something like, hmm, I want to call my application a thing that already exists. No, you're not doing that gate the first month of a new snap upload behind human review. Block all interface connection requests behind a human review, including automatically connected ones like network and home. Fully staff the team doing the above to respond to registration, interface connection, and upload requests in a timely fashion. Send out a clean snap update as we did in 2018 to all clients that have the scam snap still installed and things they should seriously consider next. Publishers should have their newness on the platform highlighted with a new publisher badge. Snaps that are less than some number of months old, maybe two, should have a new application badge. Snaps that are fewer than a number of installs should not appear in search results. The store should make prominent notes to users that newly published snaps and snaps from new publishers should be viewed with extreme caution. Provide better education to users on the risks of installing finance and cryptocurrency software from the snap store. Review and update all the wording in graphical and web storefronts to ensure users aren't given a false impression that malware is safe. Again, stop calling sandboxing safe. What Canonical should not do? Nothing. Now, in this case, they did a little bit more than nothing. They quietly deleted all the snaps and didn't mention it. It's a little bit better than nothing. Another thing, blame the user. This kind of response and celebrate that being a target for bad actors means the platform is now big and successful. This is what they did back in 2018. Back in 2018, there was an app that had a crypto miner in it that did not advertise the fact that it had a crypto miner. The first question worth asking in this case is whether the publisher was in fact doing anything wrong, considering that mining cryptocurrency 
is not illegal or unethical by itself. That perspective was indeed taken by the publisher in question here, who informed us that the goal was to monetize software published under licenses that allow it, unaware of the social or technical consequences. The publisher offered to stop doing that once contacted. Of course, it is misleading if there is no indication of the secondary purpose of the application. That's in fact why the application was taken down in the store. There are no rules against mining cryptocurrencies, but misleading users is a problem. There was no question about whether this was bad. If your application has a crypto miner in it and you don't tell the user about that, it's malware. Also, the event identified over the weekend was unfortunate, but also expected in the sense that any popular software store will need to handle and mitigate abuse. We take these events seriously and will continue to watch the store closely and to improve the security of the platform as a whole. I have never read a bigger lie. This was five years ago, and the exact same things are still happening. Canonical. I will say this once. You need to get your act together. If you want Snaps to be an important part of the Linux ecosystem, you cannot, you cannot keep running the Snap Store like this. Because if you do, you rightfully deserve all of the criticism you get. Because this is not okay. Flathub is a volunteer project and they manage to deal with it. They have human reviewers to deal with this problem. You need to hire people and make this their full-time position dealing with applications. No more automatic registrations. You need people doing this. To the users out there, until Canonical gets their act together, stop supporting the Snap Store and actively remind people about how bad Canonical is running it. The AUR is run about as well as the Snap Store. And at least in the AUR case, you know this fact. Nobody assumes the AUR is safe. People assume the Snap Store is safe because Canonical keeps trying to say it is. It's not, and they're not making it better. And final note, please don't harass developers that are at Canonical or developers that want to put their application on the Snap Store. This is a Canonical management problem. They need to hire people. I need to step away because this situation has really annoyed me. So until next time, um, let me know your thoughts down below. I did put a poll out on my channel yesterday, which gave me a fairly good indication of uh, how other people feel about this situation as well. And um, let me know your thoughts down below. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear, pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and go support Flathub.